Hey, summer science students. It is our last week, week four. We officially, including today, have five more lessons left. So let's go ahead and get started. We're almost to the finish line. Okay, just a reminder that all of the quizzes in yellow should be done by now. These quizzes are just from week three. So guys, we only have five days left basically for you guys to get all of your work done. So I hope you didn't leave it to the last minute. If you did, it's never too late to start. And um, I always tell my students, something's better than nothing. Okay, so before the next lesson, we need to read Habitats, two levels of organization on, on grad point, and we need to take the quizzes associated with those two chapters. So today's a little different in that we're finally, finally on unit three, so click on that. The screen will pop up, click on folder number one. We're gonna do the yellow today, and the red is for tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to start with a grad point summary. Again, this is just like an outline of what I think are the most important points that by the end of the lesson you should be able to understand. All right, so we'll start off with a habitat. Remember, living things are also called organisms. Anything that has at least one cell is considered living. So bacteria, they have usually one cell. Plants, Fungi and algae, which is an organism that's related to plants, are all organisms, okay? So I think sometimes we think of organisms, we automatically think of animals, but don't forget that plants are organisms, fungi are organisms, and bacteria are organisms. They're all living. Okay, so all organisms need things like water and air to survive. We all have needs that need to be met. A habitat is like an organism's home. I always think H for habitat, H for home. A habitat provides the things that an organism need, need to live, grow, and reproduce. So everything can be found in, inside your habitat. So like, again, like think of your home. Everything that you need is in your home. You've got water from the faucet. You've got food from the fridge. You've got shelter. Um, you have a roof over your head. You have a bed to sleep in. Those are all of your basic needs are met within your home. All right, so let me give an example of what needs are met in a, another organism's habitat, like plants and algae. Remember that algae are related to plants, and they also go through photosynthesis like plants. This is like the green stuff that you'll see um, maybe growing on top of a pond. So plants and algae get soil, carbon dioxide, and water from their habitat in order to go through photosynthesis. And just a reminder, photosynthesis is when plants and algae will make their own food from the sun. But in order to do that, they still need to get soil, carbon dioxide, and water from their habitat in order to go through that process. Okay, so within a habitat, there are things that are living, made out of cells, and non-living things, things that are not made out of cells. So, for example, let's look at this picture. I have a zebra at a watering hole, and the living things that I can see in this picture are the zebra, um, the plants, but there are a couple non-living things. For example, water, not made of cells, so it's non-living. Air, also not made of cells, so it's non-living. And mountains in the background, made of rock. Rock is not made of cells, so it's considered non-living. But still, you depend on that stuff, right? Like living things can't live without water, but water isn't living. So a living thing in, in a habitat is called a biotic factor. Like think of the word biology. Bio means living. Let me give you some examples. An oak tree, a ferret is like a little rodent, and an eagle. So again, remember, plants are living. Sometimes I think we think they are we think they're just a thing but they're technically made of cells now a non-living thing in a habitat is called an abiotic factor let me give you some examples water oxygen and soil which is a fancy science word of saying dirt again not made of cells so they're non-living but super important we can't live without water we can't live without oxygen we can't live without food and most of our food is plants that's grown in the dirt Okay, so if you could please stop the, and pause the video. We finished with Habitat, it was short and sweet. And I'd like you to take the quiz now for that chapter. Again, go back, it was just a 
few minutes, watch it again before you take the quiz. I think that'll be really helpful. Moving on to our next chapter, levels of organization. Living and non-living things or biotic and abiotic things that interact in a particular area make up an ecosystem. So if we think back to that zebra picture of the zebras hanging out in that watering hole or pond, that's an example of an ecosystem because I have my living thing, my zebra and plants, and I have my non-living or abiotic things, the water and the air and the mountain. So an ecosystem is the largest level or category of organization, and it can be broken down into smaller levels. So that might be a confusing sentence. So let me try to put it into more familiar terms. So maybe you have a little sibling or cousin, and they like to play with these nesting or stacking toys. You know, it helps them learn size and shape and color, and you can fit all the pieces within the big box. So for example, in this picture, the red box. Or maybe you've seen these dolls, they're called Russian nesting dolls. When my sister, or when I was a little girl, my sister spent a summer in Russia, and she came home with all these little Russian nesting dolls. And it's really cute because all these dolls fit inside each other, and then all of them fit inside the biggest um, Russian nesting doll. So an ecosystem is like the biggest red box or the biggest Russian nesting doll and within an ecosystem you can fit more categories. So let's take a look at the other categories. So within an ecosystem that's the biggest level or the biggest category I can fit a community and within a community I can fit a population and within a population I can fit a species and again all of these dolls are going to sit inside my biggest category uh, which is an ecosystem. So I'm now going to go smallest to biggest. So I'm going to start off with a species. So a species describes an organism that can mate with each other to produce offspring. And then those offspring can also mate and produce offspring. And when I say offspring, I mean babies. So it's basically like, if I was to sum it up, it's a animal that can mate with another animal of the same kind and produce successful babies or babies that are going to live and survive and reproduce some more. So that is, an example of that is a prairie dog. So, okay, here's a prairie dog, it's a type of rodent. Um, but a prairie dog can't mate with a rat. A prairie dog can only mate with a prairie dog because they're within the same species and you usually cannot mate outside of your species. All right, moving on to the next level. I'm going to now talk about a population. And a population is a group of the same species that are living together in an area in an area. For example, a burrow of prairie dogs. So uh, these are all within the same species. Um, but it's just describing the a group of the same species that are living in the same area. So like, for example, if we were in a classroom and I was teaching in summer school, I would consider us a population because we're all humans and we're all hanging out in that same classroom. Next is going to be a community, and that's going to be different groups of populations. So it's different groups of plants and animals that live in the same area. So again, if I was using the classroom example, so if it was just us humans, just me and you guys, we would be just a population within the classroom. But if I moved in some plants and I moved in an aquarium full of fish, now I made our classroom a community because I have three different populations, a population of human, a population of plants, and a population of fish. So let me give you another example if we're continuing with the prairie dogs. So I've got a population of prairie dogs, I have a population of a hawks, of hawks, and I have populations of badgers. Um, hawk and badgers will eat prairie dogs. But it, that's a community because it's different species, different populations that all exist in the same place. Now, groups of communities and abiotic factors, so now I have living and non-living things, that will make up an ecosystem. And again, remember, they can all kind of nest together. Okay, stop.
We are done with levels of organization. Go ahead and take the quiz levels of organization. Again, I recommend that you just replay that video one more time, maybe even watch it while I take the quiz. And when you are finished with that, congratulations, you are done with your last Monday of summer school, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.